U.S. unemployment has now fallen to a 50-year low as hiring picked up steam. The Labor Department today reported that the unemployment rate dropped to 3.5 percent in November, down from 3.6 percent. Meanwhile, employers added a larger-than-expected net of 266,000 new jobs last month. That is the biggest increase in 10 months. Today's strong jobs report sent stocks soaring on Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average surged 337 points to close at 28,015. The Nasdaq rose more than 85 points, and the S&P 500 added 28. Florida officials have confirmed that a gunman who killed three people today at Naval Air Station Pensacola was a member of the Saudi Air Force. The attack happened in a classroom where the suspect was undergoing aviation training. Several people were wounded before an officer shot and killed the suspect. Governor Ron DeSantis said authorities are investigating several possible links to terrorism. The government of Saudi Arabia uh, needs to, to make, make things better for these victims. Um, and I think that they, they're going to owe a debt here, uh, given that this is one of their individuals. When you have a foreign national involved, um, you know, particularly in that part of the world, the investigation is obviously going to be different than if it were just somebody from a local community. In Washington, President Trump said that Saudi King Salman had called to offer condolences and assistance. The king said that the Saudi people are greatly angered by the barbaric actions of the shooter and that this person in no way, shape or form represents the feelings of the Saudi people who love the American people so much. This was the second deadly shooting at a U.S. military base this week. The first happened at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard in Hawaii on Wednesday. A U.S. Navy sailor fatally shot two people before killing himself. Military officials said today that he had been unhappy with his commanders and was undergoing counseling. The White House will not take part in the House of Representatives' impeachment proceedings against President Trump. White House counsel Pat Cipollone, Cipollone, that is, wrote a letter to the House Judiciary Committee's chairman, Jerry Nadler, and demanded an end to the inquiry, calling it, quote, completely baseless. Meanwhile, House Republicans said today that they want to hear testimony from Hunter Biden, the former vice president's son, from House Intelligence Committee chairman Adam Schiff, and from the anonymous whistleblower. The death toll from a migrant boat that capsized near the northwest African country of Mauritania rose to 63 people today. The vessel was headed to Spain's Canary Islands when it ran out of fuel Wednesday and overturned off Africa's west coast. Some 150 migrants were on board. Most were from nearby Gambia. The U.S. sanctioned three Iraqi military, or rather militia, leaders today over the killing of anti-government protesters. The men are accused of leading Iranian-backed paramilitary groups that shot at demonstrators. More than 400 people have been killed since October in a crackdown on protests demanding reforms. Today, a senior State Department official left open the possibility of imposing more sanctions. We're not done. This is an ongoing pro uh, process. We're, uh, our, these designations don't prejudice future uh, no, no, uh, designations. No, I'm not suggesting. We will be doing uh, further designations in the future. In central Baghdad today, thousands of protesters flooded the streets, demanding the formation of a new government. Later, Iraqi officials said that an attack targeting those demonstrators killed at least 15 people. Lebanon's outgoing prime minister appealed for international aid today amid the country's worst economic crisis in decades. Prime Minister Saad Hariri sent letters to several countries, including the U.S., asking for help in securing credit lines. For months, thousands of protesters have taken to the streets across the country to accuse the government of mismanagement and corruption. China today canceled planned tariff hikes on U.S. pork and soybean imports amid ongoing trade negotiations. In September, Beijing had promised to lift the duties in the hopes of securing an agreement. Washington is set to impose a new round of tariffs on $160 billion of Chinese goods on December 15th. 
Oil prices surged today after OPEC reached a deal committing to some of the deepest oil output cuts this decade. At a meeting in Vienna, the group's oil-producing countries and their ally, Russia, agreed to cut an extra 500,000 barrels per day through the first quarter of next year. The move aims to prevent an oversupply and to boost oil prices. North Carolina Republican Congressman George Holding announced today that he is retiring in 2020. His Raleigh area district now leans heavily Democratic after a court ordered the congressional map be redrawn. Meanwhile, California Congressman Duncan Hunter said today that he will resign at the end of the year. He faces charges of misusing campaign funds. There are now 23 House Republicans who are not seeking re-election next year. Still to come on the news hour, France comes to a halt as the nation erupts in protest over President Macron's pension reform. How a fringe conspiracy theory about Ukraine gained currency in the Oval Office. Mark Shields and David Brooks break down a week that brought us even closer to impeachment and much more. This is the PBS NewsHour from WETA Studios in Washington and in the West from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism at Arizona State University.